Wild places and wild things were nature's gifts. They represented the true health and wealth of a new nation. A treasure turned into a commodity supported by the myth of inexhaustibility. A treasure we prove capable of destroying by a culture justified in its exploitation. The challenge became keeping wildlife and wild places from complete destruction. And that challenge was great. But whose challenge was it? It would take purpose. But whose purpose was it? History shows sportsmen were the first to recognize the consequences of human actions on wildlife and natural resources and sound the alarm to mobilize and to conserve the irreplaceable. To succeed, all the people needed to engage and awaken to the fact that this land was their land, that wildlife did indeed belong to them and was in their care. Some felt the answer was wildlife should be left alone, isolated from the footsteps of man. Others believed there was a place for both, and that wildness took stewardship, and through a harmonious relationship, both man and nature could prosper. Thankfully, this conservation ethic won the day. A new ethic was born, and with it an entire system built on sustainable use, the likes mankind had never seen before, or has seen since. Was this the first environmental revolution? Job one was recovering what was lost. Market hunting was eliminated. Land was set aside as sanctuaries for wildlife recovery. Laws and legislation were enacted. Wildlife and environmental sciences were created. Expert agencies were established, manned with trained professionals. Hunting and land ethics were codified and accepted. Conservation has a price, and sportsmen were the first to foot the bill by taxing themselves and establishing the user-pay public benefit model Our wildlife and the land recovered. The challenges of today are vast, keeping that which we have gained, but no greater than the complete reversal of fortune achieved over the past 125 years. The good news is the track record of conservation success speaks for itself. We have the science and the know-how. The conservation community has grown, is more organized than ever. And our scope of influence, the greatest in history. And most importantly, 
People want wild places and wild things now and into the future. Today, wildness abounds, and it took purpose and commitment. It will take this same purpose and commitment to keep wildness with us tomorrow. You don't have to be a sportsman to appreciate wild places and wild things. But if you do, you can thank a sportsman and the agencies and organizations they support.